next installment of our SOLIDWORKS tips and tricks from CAD Dimensions SOLIDWORKS 2016 rollout sessions. My name is Franco Rotoli and I'm just going to be going through my tips and tricks that I presented at our rollout events. For my first tip and trick, I'm going to be using some Windows functionality inside SOLIDWORKS to make our modeling techniques easier. In Windows, we know we can control C and control V, which is copy and paste respectively. Did you know that in SOLIDWORKS, you can do that as well? If I select on a feature, I can control C, select a face and control V. I can actually copy that component to where I clicked. I can also control drag a feature from one face to another, and that copies the feature to that face. I can control select two features and control drag and it copies two features. In this case, an up to next hole as well as the boss extrude. I can also shift drag features. So if I grab this feature here that I misplaced, I can hold down shift, I can drag this around to other faces. It will respect any internal sketch relations that are in there as well. So be careful with that. If you do have a relationship to any outside geometry, you might get the dangling or broken relations. But it's a very quick and easy way to create copies of features onto other faces. This works with extrudes and cuts like I just showed you. It also works with fillets and holes and things like that. We can also use this technique for planes. If I select on my front plane, you can see the outline comes in. I can also control drag the outline of my front plane and it automatically hops me to the plane creation dialog where I can quickly and easily type in a distance value and I can create an offset plane one millimeter off my front plane with just a quick control drag and uh, input the dimension value very quickly and easily. So that's a, it's a quick way to, to add features to your tree. Speaking of our feature tree, at the very top of our feature tree, we have what's called quick filters. And this is a very quick way to search your tree for different features. Um, as we all know, a very complicated part can have a very, very long feature tree. To search our tree, we just come up here and start typing. So if I wanna search, for example, for slot, I have some slots in here. I can just type in S L O and it automatically filters out my tree and we can see the one slot feature that I have in my feature tree. This also works for assemblies and I'll show you that in a second. The last thing while we're in this part that I wanna show you is the rollback bar. We all know what the rollback bar does, right? It allows us to go back in history and modify features without having to rebuild features at the bottom of our tree. Well. At higher resolutions or for very long feature trees, it can be rather difficult sometimes to select the rollback bar and to keep selecting it. Well, in Tools Options under Feature Manager, we have what's called arrow key navigation. And what arrow key navigation allows us to do when that box is checked, you don't have to drag the rollback bar. You select the rollback bar once and using the arrow keys on your keyboard, it allows you to roll backwards and forwards. So I'm using the up arrow key to roll back and the down arrow key to roll forward. So very quickly and easily, without having to worry about selecting the rollback bar more than once, I can roll backwards and forwards in my feature tree. It's a very handy little tool. I'm gonna to jump to the assembly that this component is in and we can see it here. In my assembly, I can also use the quick filters and filter out components. So for example, this block that I created is called the tip and trick block. If I start typing tip, we can see that it filters out any components that have the word tip in them. So obviously the tips of our spreader here, as well as the tips and tricks block that I created. Not only does it filter them out in the tree, but you can see it actually hides them in my assembly. And I can create display states or, or isolation points at this point very quickly and easily just by file name. So that was tip. If I search bolt, it's a very quick way to only show my bolts or to filter out my bolts. Or if I wanna do pin, for example, it's a very quick way to filter out my pins. If we go back to the part for a second, I also wanna show you how quickly and easily it is to create a plane 
at some strange angle. If I want to create a sweep, for example, on this edge here, maybe I want to sweep a weld bead or something like that on this edge. Obviously, this is an example part, but I would have to create a plane that's perpendicular to this edge up here or down here. And I can do that very easily with my reference geometry toolbar, but I don't have to. If I just select the edge near the point where I want to create the plane, and I click my sketch tool to start a new sketch, SolidWorks automatically creates a sketch plane perpendicular to that edge at the point near the point where I select it. So here we can very quickly now create our circle. We can see that that's at an oblique angle. And don't forget to fully define your sketches. Make this 0.05 and we will just quickly just sweep this down that edge. Okay, and we can see that I put in plane two at that oblique angle. Again, just by selecting the edge and starting a new sketch, it will automatically put a sketch plane there for you. So speaking of oblique angles, on my drawing, I want an auxiliary view that looks something like this. It's not really an isometric view. It's not really um, a, an easy view to get on a drawing. In my SOLIDWORKS model, because I can rotate and zoom and pan very easily, I can get the view the way I want it, hit my spacebar on my keyboard, and click the button that says New View. And I can call this whatever I want. We'll call it Oblique 1. Now, wherever I am in my 3D model, I can click my spacebar and select oblique one, and it brings me back to that view. This comes in very handy on a drawing where I want to insert that view. We can just go to insert model view, select my block, and right here we have oblique one. This also shows up in our view palette. you can see oblique one show up right here. So I can just drag and drop oblique one from my view palette. I don't need to create any strange auxiliary views or any, any parent views to that. I can create this all in the 3D environment. Finally, if I go, if I zoom in and I realize that that's not the view that I want, I need it rotated a little bit. In a drawing in SOLIDWORKS, we can click on the 3D drawing view tool and that allows me to actually rotate the drawing view to a view that I want. When I click the Save button, the same dialog comes up and we'll call this Oblique 2 and it saves that there. The neat part about that is if I go back to the model, hit my spacebar, we can see I can now access my Oblique 2 view as well. That's all I had for my tips and tricks. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the upcoming weeks, the other guys are going to present their tips and tricks from our SOLIDWORKS 2016 rollout event this year. Thanks again. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.